five senses or sensors touch, smell, sight, hearing, taste, and they're all controlled by our brain. Well, the average car can have over 70 different sensors, and they are all controlled by their computer, which is the PCM. Now, wouldn't it be nice if our cars only had five sensors? Well, what is a sensor? Well, it is a device that responds to a stimulus such as heat, light, sound, pressure, motion, or even magnetism, and it transmits a resulting impulse or a signal back to the controller or computer. When we are talking about sensors, here's a question. Are all sensors inputs? Think about that. Are all sensors inputs? Well, yes, they are. Well, here's another question. Are all inputs sensors? No, they're not. Now, feeling a little bit confused? Well, let's look at this a little bit. Battery Plus is an input to the PCM but it does not come from a sensor. It is a direct input. And ground is an input to the PCM, but it does not come from the sensor either. It is a direct input as well. Sensors may be switches, variable resistors, voltage or frequency generators. Some inputs are simply connections from another module or a battery and ground. All sensors perform the same basic function. They detect a mechanical condition, or a chemical state, or a temperature. And then they change whatever they detect into an electrical signal that can be interpreted and used. Some sensors are just like switches, either normally open or normally closed, and they send a digital signal to the PCM. Some are provided a reference voltage, and some can be ground or power circuits. Some examples are idle tracking switches power steering pressure switch, an overdrive switch, clutch pedal position switch, ignition switch, park neutral switch, AC clutch switch, brake light switch, and temperature switch, and more. Now, let's take a closer look at each type of these sensors. Temperature sensors. They are often referred to as thermistors. And according to Wikipedia, a thermistor is a type of resistor whose resistance varies significantly based on the temperature it reads. Most of these sensors are NTC thermistors, which stands for negative temperature coefficient. What does that mean? Well, it means high resistance will show cold and low resistance will show hot. The PCM supplies a 5 volt reference and that voltage is changed by the sensor. So it's going to change from 5 volts to a different voltage. Now the signal return is on the ground wire. There are two types of thermistors, positive, positive temperature coefficient, and they can be used as a current limiting device, or like for circuit protection, and they can also be used as timers. Negative temperature coefficient sensors, now they present a higher resistance initially, which prevents large currents from flowing and turning on. And then they heat up, and because they heat up, they become much lower resistance to allow a high current flow during a normal operation. Coolant temperature sensors. It reads coolant temperature, so it is always mounted where it has access to the coolant so that it can read it, like in the cylinder head, the engine block, or sometimes even in a heater hose. They can be a one wire, they can be a two wire, and you can even have both on the same engine. If it is a one wire, the signal goes to the gauge on your dashboard. If it is a two wire, the signal goes to the ECM. Study this diagram. Let's see how it works. It is a coolant temperature sensor, and it is a negative coefficient thermistor, and the resistance goes down as the temperature goes up. Air temperature sensors. It reads air temperature, so it is always mounted where it has access to the air, like in the intake manifold, somewhere in the throttle duct, or it can even be inside the mass airflow sensor. It is not a one wire. It will always be at least two wires, sometimes more, and the diagram would be able to tell you how many wires and which ones they are. It does not have a gauge, 
it simply reports to the PCM, so you cannot monitor this on your dashboard. Study this diagram. It shows how the air temperature sensor works, and it looks a lot like the coolant temperature sensor that we just studied, right? Well, that's because it is the same. It is just sensing air instead of coolant. Cold air is denser than hot air. Now, denser means that more air molecules are packed tighter together. And since the air molecules are packed tighter together, the fuel needed to balance the air-fuel mixture needs to be packed tighter together as well. Thus, you end up with a richer, more fuel mixture. There are other temperature sensors that are constructed differently, but they all do the same thing. They measure and report a temperature. Now those can include a fuel rail pressure sensor, an EGR temperature sensor, engine oil temperature sensor, and a cooling fan temperature sensor.